and welcome to God Knows. This is going to be just, I have to say, the fourth, but sadly for now, the last of this series with James Gall on God Knows. And we have had an absolute fabulous time. I hope they've had a good time because we've had a great time. We've had more time even when we're not on the air than when we are on the air. But we so enjoy having you come into like our living room and because uh, we have, we believe God's given us some amazing things to share. And we're so glad to have James here. I mean, look at the credentials this guy carries. Sorry. No, I'll let okay. you do that. <laughs> you know, he's a prolific author, a, a true prophet. He's a, a member of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, a round table of prophets that have met here in the U.S. since 1999, faithful member of that. And also he does something called Prayer Storm. And uh, I want to talk about Prayer Storm just a second mm -hmm. because we haven't done that on the other programs. Mm. Again, that's one of the things that, you know, the diversity of prophetic callings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. prophets being different and yet similar, that Cindy and I have carried a lot together through the nations for years, and that's a prophet wedded together with the intercessory burden or call. And so something that I have is a, a website just called prayerstorm.com, and I send out free messages and it actually goes into maybe over 80 nations, mm -hmm. you know, constantly, like mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, um, uh, a web-based mm -hmm. uh, virtual house of prayer. Mm -hmm. And you sign up for the hour that changes the world. Mm -hmm. And so whatever uh, time zone, every time zone, the whole world is listed there. And you just click your time zone, click what day of the week. You sign up for as many as seven slots as you want, but one for sure. And then we pray every week for four major things. We pray for revival in the church, whether you're in Indonesia or you're in China or you're in Brazil or you're in Russia, or you're in the United States or Mexico, wherever. Mm -hmm. Pray for revival in the church. Mm -hmm. We pray for the greatest youth awakening the world will ever see. We're really we committed to, to that, that, right? Yeah. And, and we pray for Israel, God's heart for all the descendants of Abraham. And we offer up ourselves for crisis intervention mm -hmm. through the power of intercession. And of course, we include governmental intercession. But today... A lot of that goes over into crisis intervention. Yeah. <laughs> yes, especially for America, uh, Syria, well, for Israel, you know, like, you know, in the Middle right. East. A lot exactly. of nations, right. the Middle East, yeah. It, so we laughed about that, but we're serious about crisis intervention. And that's one of the four themes that we carry in mm -hmm. Prayer Storm. So yeah, great. Well, and this mix of prophetic intercession of the prophet, in fact, one of the first times we really mm -hmm. had a season of flowing together was in mm -hmm. 1999. Yep. And it was the first time this prophet's round table right. met. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were getting the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And a number of the prophets at the council had had dreams or visions about something terrible coming mm -hmm. towards America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specifically the East Coast. The East Coast. Mm -hmm. And you might remember, I, I mm -hmm. think James Ryle did, Mike Bickle, I think it had a dream. Some had had dreams mm -hmm. of a, like a big ocean liner coming towards the East Coast, people jumping off, you know, afraid, mm -hmm. disaster right. coming. And so... Um, we knew that the Lord was warning us and the word warning. about terrorism. Mm -hmm. yep. And so we began to weep. And yep. I remember it hit me so hard I fell down weeping. And yep. I didn't know you as well then. And I heard someone else yep. <laughs> wailing on the other <laughs> right, side. Right behind you, actually. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, here, here James and I are on the floor in a puddle in travail. And we're the only ones. Yeah, that's right. Everybody else kind of standing Everybody's around. Everybody else is stoic. Yes. And the Holy Spirit, I'm over here and Cindy's over there. And the Holy Spirit says, get up and go get behind Cindy right now. So she doesn't even know I've done it. I've done it. And then the spirit of travail, or however you want, the burden of the Lord hits uh -huh. us simultaneously. <laughs> We're like sobbing together. And she'll know that I'm back there. And it's like, that's when Cindy and I realized partially that like, huh, our burden and gifting was pretty similar. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. And so anyway, but a word came yeah. just to kind of finish mm, that yeah. story too. Uh, Jim LaFleur gave the word yeah, that he said that what is coming cannot be averted, mm -hmm. but it can be, can be lessened. And it was 9-11. Yeah. 
And so anyway, so the burden of the Lord, it's important when God mm -hmm. gives you a burden to pray. I, I remember, and yeah. to listen to the dreams. One time in our office here, Lonnie, our head of accounting, had yeah. a dream mm -hmm. that there was a, a terrorist that was going to try to blow up a mm -hmm. building in downtown Dallas. We wow. called an SOS prayer meeting, yeah. started crying out to God that it would be discovered. Right. And just not very far away, we yeah. live kind of rural area here yeah. uh, in Italy, Texas. They wow. found a terrace that was going to blow up a major bank building mm. in downtown Dallas. And that's crisis intervention. Right. Now, you address some of this in one of your pioneer books. Well, actually, several of them, but Possessing the Gates right. of the Enemy. And so we believe in this today, and we believe that God wants to intervene in the Middle East and and what was the Arab Spring that became the Arab Winter? I just want to declare over the Middle East, God's road map is the final plan. Right. And God has a good future and a hope for every people of every nation in Jesus' name. Right. I yeah. agree with that. In fact, God's been speaking a lot to us about Isaiah 19 yes. and the Isaiah 19 highway. And in fact, when I, I was uh, prophesying over Graham Power, maybe mm -hmm. Graham, yes. maybe you're watching, but yep. Graham South Africa. started the Global Day of Prayer mm -hmm. that went worldwide. But I was prophesying that out of Africa, uh -huh. that was the Isaiah 19 portion back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We have the Back to Jerusalem yes. movement that's the Asian, you know, out of China. Right. We have the Spice Route, which is the lower route back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But there's also an Isaiah 19 route. That's right. And I just see this divine convergence of that's intercession. Right that God is doing right now, building a highway of holiness. You know, in Isaiah 19, it says that in that day, Assyria, mm -hmm. Egypt, and Israel. And Israel will be the third party. Yes, will. And you were just recently in the Mount of, on the Mount of Olives right. with the Jerusalem House of Prayer for All Nations. My, our dear friend, Tom Hess, who's a prophetic intercessor, pioneer of many years, yes. along with many other ministries and leaders in Israel right. as well. Right, Barry Siegel, many. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and Rick Ridings and yes. so oh, many. Yes, Rick, of yeah, course. With Tent of Hillel and Auburn and Rachel Bosque and Tent of David. No, 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 no. Yeah, but we are so thankful for the harp and the bowl and the prayers and the worship that's arising in the earth today. Believe me, prophetically, we are in a precipice or crossing a threshold into the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the world has ever seen and the greatest youth awakening mm -hmm. is beginning. And so we are just pumped about this. Yeah. We're excited about yeah, this. Yeah, even, you know, we saw, we watched a video up at IHOP when I was speaking up there for 70 hours yeah. out of Egypt, yes, showing this right. great youth One gathering. One thing out in the desert with over 10,000 oh, youth for like 12 hours of worship oh, there in my. Egypt. Yeah. You know, I a uh, couple of years ago, I had uh, two dreams on the Day of Atonement about a unprecedented outpouring of the Holy Spirit going to happen in the nation of Egypt and the Holy Spirit gifts of healings and workings of miracles falling on some of the Coptic Orthodox priests and that a revival would happen in the nation of Egypt. Mm. Rick Ridings, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Adam, that has a 24-hour right. house of prayer there on Mount Zion, also bringing together Jewish youth and Arab oh, youth. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and, the conferences that they hold in Israel. Yes, in bringing Israel. Bringing these together. And that's awesome. This is a sign to this generation. God's heart is reconciliation. Jew and Gentile. Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want any to perish. That's right. And the prophetic is to be wedded with evangelism. I know we're, we mentioned prophetic intercession. Let's mention prophetic evangelism yes. for a moment. That's there, what that youth movement too, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. and, what happened in Sicily. And there's we, dream teams and interpretation and and signs and wonders. And, and I've taken teams to like new age festivals and have wow. free healings. And Tell have, us a story. Oh my, oh my gosh, there was a young man, Lord give me his name, uh, uh, Valentine, uh, how old he was <laughs> and, and that he had never been in a Christian meeting ever in his life. He gets saved, he gets filled with the Holy Spirit, he gets healed of a father wound, he gets delivered of demons and baptized in the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues all like that that's at a new service. age fair. It was a good deal. <laughs> well, yeah, know, and he didn't even pay anything. For it. <laughs> that's pouring it's out great. in Brazil, yeah. too. It's Brazil great. has been having oh, manifestations yeah. of that. 
Again, Brazil's right. having amazing youth, you know, outpourings there. It's one of the five nations that, you know, our dear friend and mentor Peter Wagner said is a re nation in revival is Brazil yeah. today. Yes, it yeah. absolutely is. And, and worship movements are massive there. Huge. Huge. It's awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the Holy Spirit is, is really pouring out in a great way. Well, you know, but it's talking about Brazil. They have another side of Brazil. It's the spiritist true. side. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they have psychics and spiritists. Mm -hmm. And then... Secretism. Yeah, the prophets. So mm -hmm. what's the difference? Like, how do we know who's real and who's not real? Or how about some of the broadcasts today of crossing over? Mm -hmm. Is that real? Is that genuine? Is that of the Holy Spirit? Or is that some other thing entity that's pulling is that demonic is it or is there soulish power that is not surrendered to the holy spirit and it is in that sense it's human it's soulish and then and then wedded with occult or things of that nature right yeah well i th the difference of course is like a medium or psychic if they're not saying this is from the power of god it's right. from another that's power right. you know and then and, and then uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the prophet speaks from God. God speaks through you, right. through the Holy Spirit out of you. And so, you know, it's not that a psychic will not give you some information right. under the power of divination. Right. And people don't understand that. They think everything will be wrong. Well, they'll tell you enough to... Uh -huh. to you know, hook you bait really hook. to bait the mm -hmm. hook. In fact, we see this at 16 and the one with the spirit of divination, right. the mm -hmm. Python spirit, what she said was true. That's right. She said, this is a, a, a word that leads us to the one true God, right. which is, was true and was yet Paul was disturbed for three days. I love what it says in the book of Acts. It says he was annoyed in his spirit, mm -hmm. but he had to wait. What was he? We don't know for sure. What was he doing? It's probably testing the spirits. Mm -hmm. He was probably watching to see what was the fruit of this mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. And then it says after three days, it says he speaks to the spirit, not to the woman. Right. And she gets delivered. And then the whole atmosphere changes and revival breaks out. Well, probably that was a, a strong man over the area mm. that inhabited her. But, you know, you can manifest a territorial spirit. But um, but what happened mm. is after the spirit was cast That's out right. of her, she didn't know anything. That's right. She couldn't tell she fortunes couldn't, anymore. She couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, so that was not under the inspiration of God. That's right. It was another spirit that mm. gave her information. That's right. You know, it's really interesting, Cindy, that we, we've been talking about Brazil, which we know has a, a great degree of spiritism and right. what we would call the counterfeit. Mm -hmm. But that's a good sign that they, they are a people who are spiritually hungry. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. that all just because the, the, the manifestation of the demonic or of the counterfeit is a sign of God really wanting to do something with these people in a special way. So in a, in a backward sort of mm -hmm. way, you know, they're manifesting a characteristic that God would like to use right. uh, and give them the real and introduce them to the real power yeah. because they will be, if they do that, will be a very powerful people. Yeah, and get delivered yeah, and absolutely. meet Jesus. Absolutely. Right. right, but not everybody is, right. that, that is a psychic would be out of an evil heart. That's absolutely right. You know, I mean, they're white witches and they mm. want to help people, they want to heal. And, and things like that. But, you know, so people get very confused. That's why I wrote, I wrote a lot about this in my book, Deliver Us Excellent. From the Evil. I was just going to say, I'd commend to the watchers your book, Deliver Us From Evil. You spent three years or so right. researching all these different levels. Right. It's one of the classic, well-defined, well-written books to help us know the difference between black and white and then to discern the shades of gray. You know, this book that you've written is a guide to really help people and embrace a call. Right. You know, so if you really know oh, that yeah. God has called you and and you want to separate mm -hmm. from anything that's not of God, right. you talk a lot about intimacy yeah, in here. Yeah. I think this is very, very important. What What is like, after you wrote this book, what is your takeaway personally? Hmm. Did it do something to you inside? That's interesting because... I remember when I met with the publishers, mm -hmm. it was one of the most creative 
moments I've ever had with a team of people. Wow. When we, we together came up with the concept, let's do this different. Let's do this on a 21 day journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, and, and, and like my creativity buttons were like going, wow. <laughs> I'm just like, this is great, but let's do it in wedding together. And so they started like speaking into me, drawing out of me. And I said, well, it's got to be a foundation of intimacy. Mm -hmm. I said, we've got to have a section that's going to be on learned wisdom. So then I started picking right then people from the Bible because I want this to be Bible centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's got over two to three hundred. I can't remember right now. Scripture references in this book. And so the first wow. week is readings out of the life of John, the beloved, who laid his head upon the chest of the Messiah. Yes. The second week is out of Genesis about the life of Joseph, learned wisdom. And then the third week then is based out of the life of Ezekiel. And I take us and we end up on day 21, prophesy life out of Ezekiel 37. Wow. It's, mm. Well, Ezekiel was a science prophet. Yes, that's right. Very interesting. You know, Amazing. did parables, prophetic mm -hmm. parables and things like this. It's very interesting. You know, every time I've written a book, there's uh -huh. been a mark on yeah. my life from writing that book. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can say like, I always write books for movements. I mean, uh -huh. that's kind of right. how I do. Like Reformation Manifesto yes. was about that. Amazing. But I feel like as God is, mm -hmm. is really propelling a new mm -hmm. generation right. into prophetic evangelism, yeah. into speaking the word of the Lord over people, that if they don't get some of this deep yeah. well mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. they're going to go off. They're going to go to the dark side. That's true. You know. In this, I didn't actually answer your question direct, but I have it right now. Mm -hmm. When I finished this, I felt like I had helped prepare a safety net Mm -hmm. for this generation, yeah. that they can walk out on the tightrope, but there is this safety net that is there to catch them. Wow. And that was part of my goal, and I did feel fulfilled in it in Jesus. Yeah, like it was like, like that was part of a legacy yeah. for you, perhaps. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been such a great show. We, we've been all, <laughs> all over, over the, the world map. again, <laughs> all over the map. You know, prophets are very random. I, I don't know if you've noticed this. We're not linear, you know. A prophet tries to teach one, two, three, four, unless you're a prophetic teacher like Dutch Sheets. And then, you know, whether you know, you're in Cuba instead of, you know, Alaska, you just can't go there. But we're going to come back and we're going to prophesy over you and tell you what God knows about your life. So stay tuned. What is prophecy? Does it exist today? And if so, how should prophecy impact us in our contemporary lives? Now in his revealing book, The Lifestyle of a Prophet, a 21-day journey to embracing your calling, respected prophetic leader James Gall takes you on a remarkable journey into the heart of the prophetic calling. Through this unique hands-on 21-day guide, James will help you develop the intimacy with God that is essential for hearing His voice clearly. Apply prophetic insights into your own life through thought-provoking questions, devotional prayers, and practical applications. And you'll learn how to proclaim God's words faithfully and then step boldly into your calling. The Lifestyle of a Prophet, a 21-day journey to embracing your calling is filled with insight, wisdom, revelation, and the love of God, which is why Cindy and Mike want you to have a copy of your own. As a way of saying thank you for your special gift of $20 or more, Mike and Cindy will send you James Gall's book, The Lifestyle of a Prophet, A 21-Day Journey to Embracing Your Calling. They also want you to have a copy of Cindy's CD, The Second Dimension of Prophecy. In it, Cindy explains how you can actively participate in fulfilling the prophetic words that are spoken over you. It's the faithful financial support of friends like you that enables Cindy and Mike to take the prophetic word of God to so many hungry hearts around the world. And your gifts help keep the God Knows television program coming to you every week. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. In appreciation, we'll send you James Gall's book, The Lifestyle of a Prophet, a 21-day journey to embracing your calling, and Cindy's message, The Second Dimension of Prophecy. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. Hi, welcome back. 
there is someone you are watching this show and you are a revivalist. You are absolutely on fire for souls. And the Lord just says to you, I'm going to give you that venue you've been trying to get because God has told you where to go, where you're supposed to have the meeting. It just feels like, you know, it's kind of clogged up, closed up to you. But the Lord showed you the place and the Lord says, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you Isaiah 22, 22, open a door that no man can shut. You know, this is really interesting because here we have with us Mike and Cindy, and they have been pioneers for years. But I have on me right now the whole issue of women being validated mm. in the prophetic. Mm. Listen to me for a moment, my heart, okay? You are valued, mm. you are needed, we want you. I give honor to women. I release honor to your heart. I release honor and value as a spiritual leader and as a man. And I declare, we need your sensitivity. We don't need you shut down. We need your prayers. We need your prophecies. We need your dreams. We need you to hold up our hands. So I just speak a word out there to some women who might feel a little shamed or displaced. And I speak value and significance as a prophetess and to come forth into the uniqueness and the fullness of who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I think that that's so true. And I just want to say to you, there's an anointing to forgive. You know, if you've gone through times and you're a pioneer, maybe in your country you've been a pioneer. Mm -hmm. And the Lord knows and is grateful. I'm also getting that there is someone watching and you have a child. And this is a prophetic child. And this child has dreams, mm -hmm. wakes up either mm -hmm. screaming in the night, says, oh, there's something, you know, in my room or else, you know, seeing angels. And the Lord just says to you, you have given birth to a seer. And this child has God's hand all over them. And so just God's going to give you wisdom on how to raise this child. Fear not for the Lord is with you and he knows how to help you raise that child. I'm seeing a woman and you're in a wheelchair and you are a prophet and God has used you to prophesy, but you're dealing with being perplexed that how can I, how can I be used by God? How can I prophesy I, when I'm bearing the shame of being in a wheelchair because I, I should be out of a wheelchair if I'm truly a kingdom person. I should be standing strong and therefore it somehow disqualifies me. And I'm just telling you, the Lord's saying you are not disqualified. You must speak the word of God. Yes. The words that he places in your mouth have the same validity as anyone else, no matter what their stature is. So God says in the spirit stand and prophesy even though you may be in a wheelchair. Amen. I'm getting the name Luann and I, I feel like the Lord says to you, Luann, I have called you. I'm going to work out there's some situations in your family that are distressing you, but the Lord says, I, my hand is on it. I'm going to work it out. Don't be afraid. I am with you. I just see somebody's marriage and you're standing fast for reconciliation in your marriage. You've even been given a dream that it'll happen. I want to say to you, dreams do come true. <laughs> and I want to tell you, God is going to move upon the heart of this husband. And he is, I can't give you a hundred percent guarantee, but I feel the heart of the Lord falling on this man and his heart is going to repent. And I see reconciliation and restoration on the way. Oh, how beautiful. I see a man and, and you are just weeping right now. You feel so abandoned and so alone. And, I, and uh, it could be connected to marriage, but I also feel like there's just, just somebody really, really lonely and you have been uh, praying and God is hearing your prayers. I feel like there's a couple of people that you are fasting. In fact, one watcher, you're in the middle of a fast for a, a mate. You want to mm -hmm. be married. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just mm -hmm. says to you, be at peace. I've got that perfect mm -hmm. soul made for you and I am going to bring him your way. I wanted to... Uh, 
just remember, just was prompted that second, you saw me jump a little bit there, was that we have an amazing resource for you. We've talked about it so much, but I thought, well, I should offer it since we have it for you. The Lifestyle of a Prophet by James Gall. You know, he's a phenomenal writer. He is so biblical. You could use this to teach in Sunday school. You could use this for a school of the prophets. You know, it's so good. And so for uh, uh, a donation of 20 or more, we're going to send you that. You're going to love it. And we'll also send you my CD, uh, The Second Dimension of Prophecy. Maybe you got a word and you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to unpack it. You can call the 800 number on the screen or you can go to GodKnows.tv. Why don't you invest in yourself yes. today or give one to a friend? You know, the lifestyle of a prophet. The Lord is showing me there's someone out there. You have a school of the prophets and you've been looking for a new resource. And the Lord is just saying, this is what you need. This is a resource you need. And also this second dimension of prophecy. Why don't you invest in the future generations? Well, God bless you. Thanks for watching. God knows. Did God do something miraculous in your life that you'd like to share with us? Send us your story when you write us at story at generals.org. We face a critical moment of decision. Without a change in direction, the United States will accelerate into unstoppable decline. Will this nation remain a city set on a hill or is it headed over a cliff? It's time to make a stand. That's why we must take two critical steps to pray and to act. The United States Reformation Prayer Network is a 50 state union bringing you strategic state and national information that you'll need for effective targeted prayer. With your free membership at usrpn.org, you'll have the source for key intelligence that will help put your prayer into focused action. USRPN.org has scores of contributors and thousands of members, and USRPN.org will keep you aware and armed. Sign up now. Registration is free. USRPN.org. Make a stand. Stand for right. God Knows is an outreach of Generals International and is only made possible through the generous donations of partners like you. Thank you. For more resources and information on how to partner with us, please visit our website at www.godknows.tv or write us at P.O. Box 340, Red Oak, Texas 75154.